Hello, programmers. Dan McElroy here with a discussion about rules and conventions for naming things inside a program. This discussion does not cover file names. When writing code, it is important to give meaningful names to variables, constants, subroutines, classes, and objects. A rule is a requirement of the programming language that will cause a syntax error if violated. A convention is not a violation of programming language, but is like an agreement among programmers on how things should be done. As you write a lot of code, you may find that some of the rules might be a little different between different programming languages. You also may find that some of the conventions may be a little different even within the same language depending on where you work. You can use the following characters when creating a name for something inside a program, big A to big Z, small a to small z, the digits 0 to 9, and the underscore character. Some languages like C, C++, and Java also permit the use of the dollar sign as part of a name. Here are some more rules. Names cannot start with a digit, 0 through 9, and starting with the underscore is discouraged. Also important, you cannot use a keyword, also known as a reserved word that belongs to the language. Multiple human language words can be used to form a name, but spaces can't be used. Here are some examples of legal names. First name. Last name. First name combines two English words together to form one variable name. It is easy to read because the word name has its first letter capitalized. Last name is also easy to read because instead of using a space as a separator between the English words, the underscore character is used. First name starting with a numeric one is illegal because the first character is a numeric digit. First space name is illegal because a space character is used to separate the two English words. A programming language would look for a variable name first and then would not know what to do when it found the word name. Name number one is illegal because the pound sign or hash mark is not a legal character for variable names. While is not a legal name because the word while is one of the reserved words that belongs to the language itself. Although not all programming languages use the exact same set of reserved words, some of the most common are control words such as if, else, do, while, for, end, and data types such as int, integer, double, character, string. The editors in most integrated development environment systems, IDE, give a special color to reserved words. You will learn the meaning of the reserved words as you study each programming language. Many languages like C, C++, Java, C Sharp, and Python are case sensitive. Other languages like Visual Basic are not. When we say a language is case sensitive, that means the capital letters and the small letters are treated as though they have no relation to each other. It is like there are 52 different letters. For example, in C++, although this is discouraged, you could have three completely different variables named counter, counter with a capital C, counter all in uppercase letters, but in Visual Basic, all three names would refer to the exact same variable. Names can be as long as needed to make them meaningful, and abbreviations can also be used to shorten names. Just make sure they are meaningful to other people. Capitalizing each word is called camel case. Separating each word with the underscore character is called either snake case or Darwin case. Camel case makes sense to me. I kind of guess how snake case got its name. But Darwin? By convention, start the names of variables, subroutines, functions, and objects with a lowercase letter. Regular hours, overtime hours, pay equal, compute pay, open parentheses, regular hours, comma, overtime hours, close parentheses, semicolon. 
Compute pay is the name of a function also called a method in object-oriented programming. The compute pay function is being passed to parameters, regular hours and overtime hours. The function should be written to accept these two parameters, compute and return the value for the paycheck so that it can be stored in the variable named pay using the equal sign assignment operator. More on that later. Object-oriented programming is based on the concept of objects, which can contain data and executable code. The structure and form of an object is defined by a piece of code called a class. Names of classes should start with a capital letter, while names of objects should start with a small letter. Variables and constants are similar, except that, once defined, the value of a constant cannot be changed by the program when it is running. By convention, constants are defined using only a capital letters and the underscore character. Here are examples of defining constants in C, C++, and Java. As you can see, the syntax is different for each language. The C language uses the pound define statement and does not use the equal sign or a semicolon at the end of the statement. C++ starts a constant definition with the word const and uses the assignment operator and a semicolon at the end. Java is similar to C++ but uses the keyword final instead of const. C++ and Java are also similar in that a data type is associated with the constant, in this case double, but constants can be defined with any data type. A data type is not associated with the constant definition in C. Both C++ and Java are more advanced than C on the evolutionary scale for computer languages in that data types are part of the definition for a constant. Hungarian notation starts a variable or object's name with a group of lowercase letters that identify the data type. For example, an integer might start with the letters INT, like int counter, or a double with the letters DBL, double pay rate. There are advantages and disadvantages of Hungarian notation. Recommendation. Follow the naming convention already established if working on an existing project. Wikipedia has an excellent article, http colon slash slash en dot slash wiki slash Hungarian underscore notation. And most important of all is to make names meaningful both to you and any future person who may read your code. One time. I worked with a programmer who named variables junk1, junk2, junk3, junk4, junk5, etc. The programmer was temporarily assigned to help out on a different project for a couple months and when returning to the original project had no idea what each of the junk variables was used for. Don't let that happen to you. It may be you who needs to look at something you yourself have written not too long ago. It might even be a lab project you want to refer to because you need to create something similar. Using good names can help make programming more meaningful and more fun for you both now and in the future. Bye for now. See you on the next video.